Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, today is Friday. Praise God. I love Fridays. You know why? Because like I told you, use your weekend to look through everything we've been talking about for the whole week and let them sink. Praise God. Find time. Apply your heart to God's truth. Praise God. Now, are you ready for us to receive today's daily bread? Praise God. Go on. Let's, let's make that declaration and demand together. Say with me. Say, Father, I receive today my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Receive it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, hey, you know the truth? When we as God's children begin to pull things from heaven, guess what's going to happen to the land physically? The land will get blessed. The land cannot help but be blessed. Let's go into today's broadcast. Father, we bless you today. You have blessed us so much, Lord, and we recognize it. Thank you for your fruit that is being born in us. And thank you for your anointing that is present in our lives. Even right now, I declare burdens have been lifted, yokes have been destroyed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now, we are looking at things that concern our salvation. Praise God. And we've been talking about bearing fruit. That is the heart of God. That is the reason he called us. That is the only thing that will make you make heaven. See, it is. No, no, no. It's when you believe in Jesus Christ that you make heaven. If you believe in Jesus Christ, the result of your life, if you truly believe, is that you will bear fruit. The fact that somebody is putting something in the ground and says it is mango, doesn't mean it's mango seed that is actually put in the ground. It is when we see the tree and the fruit. So sometimes you say, is this not a mango tree? It is. But I've never seen a mango fruit on it. Eh, well, it's not the tree, it's the flower. So is it a mango tree? No, it's not a mango tree, praise God. So don't let your life be like that. Let the proof of your belief in him produce the fruit in you. Now, we talked about David yesterday and how because he was given, this is how we bear fruit. We don't bear fruit, like I told you last week. It's not by buying books on, on joy or buying books on, on long-suffering and reading and reading. No, it's simple. Having a direct, constant relationship with the Holy Spirit. David didn't know about the fruit of the Spirit. But you see that it was born in him. Why? Because he was giving to the Holy Spirit. Every action of David, he will demand direction from the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God will tell him, do it this way, don't do it this way. You remember Shemaiah abusing him at one time when he was running away from Absalom. And one of his men said, look, let me deal with this guy. He said, no, don't do it. And the wisdom David brought forth in that whole, whole <laughs> that, that, that period, I mean that day, will amaze you that, where is this guy? How does this guy reason? How does this guy think? I can tell you how he thinks. He thinks the Holy Spirit. That was his lifestyle. And the same Holy Spirit have been given to us today. Question is, what are you doing with him? Those decisions you're making because you think you're wise. I, I was telling you something. I said, don't let your walk distract you from the real and most important thing, which is bearing fruit. Don't let it. Don't get, allow human beings to discourage you from manifesting the, the, the real calling of your life, which is to bear fruit. Everything we do for the Lord Jesus Christ must reflect this fruit that is in us. Everything we do. So I can't do anything out of anger. That kind of fruit, that kind of action will never be acceptable in heaven. It will be offensive in heaven. 
I can't do anything out of competition. Oh, can you imagine? Their church builds a big church. We must build a bigger church. Oh, their church had a program. We must have a bigger program. That kind of a competition is not the fruit of the Spirit that is producing it. You can find the fruit of the Spirit in there. And you can do something out of anger. See, Now, when we, when we walk with the Spirit of God, you realize something. That maybe someone offends you. See, because it happens. See, as long as you're in this world, people will offend you. People will do things against you. Now, because we have the Holy Spirit in us, the fact that someone has offended you will never stop the Holy Spirit from instructing you to be a blessing to that person. But the question then is, would you yield to the Spirit of God to roll out that blessing to that person? Or will you resist him so somebody offends you and then you're fellowshipping with the Lord and, and talking with him and then he tells you, hey, I want you to send money to that person. Send what? I said, yeah, I want you to send. I said, Lord, no, 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 let me explain to you. See that person, he will not use the money for the right thing. In fact, eh, if I give him money, it will not look like I'm a weak person. You're explaining all these things to the Holy Spirit. Meanwhile, the Holy Spirit is just trying to bear fruit in you. That's what he's trying to do, to bear fruit in you. That even that person will look at you and say, you are Christ-like. That's what it means to be Christ-like. To be Christ-like doesn't mean speaking in tongues. Praise God. No, that's not what it means to be Christ. To be Christ-like doesn't even mean doing miracle. We're doing what Jesus did. But it doesn't mean we are like him. See? So, to be Christ-like simply means to bring forth the same fruits that he bore. Whether you are under pressure or you are not under pressure, the fruit of the Spirit is born to you. Now, if you are not manifest, and, and let me tell you this, the, the, the fruit of the Spirit gives you character. It gives you character. The fruit of the Spirit brings a restraint in your life. You don't just do things anyhow, you know. You, you just realize that, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I, I really want to do this. Say, no, don't do it. I'm like, hmm. Okay, I will not do it. So people expected you to react, but you, you, you refrained from reacting. Not because you didn't want to react, but because you have the Holy Spirit, who you depend for every decision and action you take. Holy Spirit, look, I'm so angry right now, I want to react. Say, no, don't react. Mm, 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 mm. Then you stop. And then they are waiting for you to react, and then they don't react. You don't, they don't see you react. And then the next thing you say, I want you to take, so, take it a step further. Go give them a gift. Ah! Lord, it's enough that I don't react. <laughs> Let's go give them a gift. You see, it's, he's not trying to get you to please them. He's trying to prove in you that you are a real branch and you will bear fruit. That's what he's trying to prove in you. So it has nothing to do with them. But guess what? You now use them to stop yourself from bearing fruit. You say, Lord, they, they really annoyed me. If I do this thing you're telling me to do, they will just feel, in fact, it's see finish. Lord, they will never respect me again. Who's concerned about them respecting you? Listen, when, oh Maria Kasha, when you bear fruit, the lifting that's going to come in your life, Nobody will tell them to respect you because they will just say, oh, no, all we've done to this guy is just increasing. We better just align ourselves with him. That's how it works. So don't let people cheat you. And ultimately, when you don't submit yourself completely to be bearing fruit, you will lose the kingdom of heaven. You will. You know, Paul was speaking. Let me show you something in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Let's, let's jump to verse 6. It says, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 6. It says, But brother goeth to law with brother, and that's before the unbelievers. Now, verse 7, Now therefore there is utterly a fault in you, 
Because you go to law with one another. Now from verse 1, he says, look, you don't take a fellow believer to court. Resolve whatever issue that needs to be resolved within yourself. Now, of course, there are times where, and, and you see, let me tell you this truth. Things happen in our life to prove who we are. Because now, you know, someone can misinterpret this scripture to say, I don't go to court. Why don't you go to court? Ah, the Bible said we should not go to court. The Bible didn't say we should not go to court. The Bible said we should not take ourselves as brethren to court. And the reason is not because the court is a sinful place. No, the reason is because, hey, there is supposed to be love working in us for one another. So what can that argument be that we cannot resolve it within ourselves? We now take it to, uh, to the unbelieving court. You know what I mean? Unbelie now, even though the judge is a born-again believer, the system that, that syst the system that he is going to be operating on is not godly. Understand what I'm saying? Because the laws that they are going, you know, that's why people manipulate the laws. Because it's not, it's not fashioned after godliness. It's fashioned after evidence. You understand what I'm saying? So someone can take a loan from you and he is not willing to pay back. And then you take him to court and they say, produce the document that I took loan from you. And they say, no, because I trusted you, so I just gave you the money. And even the judge will say, sorry, you don't have a case. Now, does that mean justice has been done? No. So that, that's why you see, you see that the law court was not fashioned after real justice. The law court was fashioned after who's smarter, after who's, who's weight, who's stronger. That's how it's fashioned. You understand what I'm saying? So now he says, as believers, why should we now submit ourselves unto that unbelieving system that is not fashioned after the Spirit of God. Because we have the Spirit of God as believers to, number one, judge our conscience. Number two, we have brethren that can look at it and say, and then Paul says, look, in fact, you know what? Let's, let's, let's look at that now. Verse 7. It says, now therefore, there is utterly a fault among you. Because you go to law with one with another. Why do you not rather take wrong? Are you seeing that now? He said, why do you not rather take wrong? Why do you not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? So instead of taking a fellow brother to court, say, hey, you know what? If you want it, you can have it. I'm not going to argue this matter with you again. You can have it. Now, when you take that step, come on now. In this life we live, there is honor, there is reward. God can honor you and God will surely reward you. So when you take a step like that, he will honor. Now, now, let's go on. There's something we're looking at. It says, nay, you do wrong and defraud. It says, instead of you allowing yourself to be defrauded, he says, you still do wrong and you defraud. And then that's your brethren. He says, know ye not that, that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkard, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Now you see all these things he listed here. There is not, there is no one who is functioning by the fruit of the Spirit that can do any of this? No one. And what do I mean? Now, now it's just telling you that when you do these things, you're not bearing fruit. The Holy Spirit is not active in your life. That's simply what it means. So he said, that's the reason why you, he said, don't be deceived. Nobody who functions like this can enter the, that can inherit the kingdom of God. It's impossible because only those who bring forth fruit will inherit the kingdom of God. And that's my message to you. Be concerned about bearing fruit. That is, the only way you can bear fruit is when you have an act working relationship day by day, minute by minute, hour by hour, second by second 
walk with the Holy Spirit. Say, is that possible? Yes, it is possible. And it is the Holy Spirit that gives that. Hear me? You can bear fruit. And like I said, that bearing fruit comes by your daily, second by second, walk with the Holy Spirit. Trusting Him for every decision that you take. And that's how we bear fruit. If you will only trust Him, he will produce the life of God. And let me tell you something. This is where the power of God will be made manifest in you, not just upon you. It will rest in you. So it will bring goodwill and healing to your own body. Then you can also take it and minister to those outside. Praise God. God bless you. I'll see you on Monday. Now, I want to invite you this weekend for our uh, on, on Sunday. Sunday is going to be the 1st of August and we're having our 24 hours prayer meeting. Listen, you've got to be in that meeting. It's going to be by Zoom. We're going to be fasting for 24 hours. That's 12 midnight on Saturday till 12 midnight on Sunday, which is the 1st. Praise God. And then we're going to be praying at every watch. Listen, don't miss it. The details of the Zoom meeting is going to be on the screen. Copy it. And make sure you attend this meeting. God bless you. Bye-bye.